So basically, in terms of sending smileys, etc., that's not acceptable, right? Let us not look because at the technicalities. I'm not talking about the technicalities. It's good okay. to mention it as yeah. well. I'm talking about... Because يعني, it will create emotions. Yes. يعني, I said, make the discussion as what? Short as possible. As short, short as possible. As what? Before that, as formal as possible. But why do you even have to make it private? Why can't you make it public? So if someone and that's why I said... So you make, can have uh, what you call the admins. Yeah, if make you have a another page. person, make another person aware of that discussion. So I mentioned that as well. And yeah. usually most of the questions that would come to most speakers, etc., or whatever, whoever it is, are questions that could be answered by someone else. So why not just redirect them to someone else of the same gender? Yeah. Or to a fatwa website or you know, to yes. a, a platform exactly. where, yeah. where, where there are a group of people watching. So yeah. you don't personally get in, involved yeah. in that. Yeah, definitely. And uh, a brother okay, uh, recently called me. And he said there is a sister, she's asking him deep questions about Islam. Yeah, really, I don't want to mention them, really deep questions. And he said, uh, I told her that I will ask a sheikh and I'll get back to you. Yeah, so I said to him, yeah, Habibi, you don't need, please listen, brothers, many of you are doing good things through social media. You want to do da'wah, you want to do khair, inshallah, that is good. But brothers and sisters, you are, please, please, Please listen to this. You are still young. You have not taken from the experience of this terrible life. Yeah? Don't put yourself, Wallahi, young brothers and young sisters, you might put yourself into troubles. Wallahi, you will regret it for the rest of your life. Yeah? The interaction between boys and girls. Subhanallah. It's the qadr of Allah. Two days ago, yeah, two young boys came to me, very beautiful young boys. Yeah, 16, like my children, 16. I helped a brother, one of them, okay, and so he became a little bit, you know, he listens to me and takes my advice. I helped him, he had a, a problem, private issue, so I helped him. So the next day, or يعني, after some time, he brought his friend, okay, he is 16. Yeah, two days ago, two days ago. And that young boy, he said, Sheikh, okay, private question, yes. He said, Sheikh, when I was 14 plus, I started to develop a positive leading, a positive feeling to uh, one of the girls in my class. Yeah? So we started to go after this school. He said, every day we spent two hours together, either in the park or somewhere in the alleyway. When we were what? 14. Yeah? And then after that, Sheikh, he said, I did يعني, all types of haram things with her, except the full relationship. And he mentioned certain words that I was surprised that a boy, okay, at the 16 age, he knows about these things. So he said, I want to come out of haram. I went to my parents. I want to get married to her. Yeah. We spoke, the parents spoke, and we agreed. Yeah. I said to him, he said, but then they, the, the parents said, until you reach the age of 18. After the age of 18, you can get married. What do you think, Sheikh? It's very difficult to be away from her, Sheikh. I tried a number of times. Yeah? It is so difficult. I cannot stay away from her even for three days. Yeah? Immediately I ring her or she rings me. I go and see her. And we need a solution, Sheikh. I said, see. Okay, but my point is, I said to him, you might marry her at this age, yeah? But if you had, let me be honest with you, brothers and sisters, from experience, from what I have seen, if you start your sexual life at a very young age, don't tell me the Prophet Sallallahu and Aisha and the Sahaba, they have done this in the past. Yes, in the past, because they have the social support. But if you have your journey, sexual journey at a young age that will not be very helpful for you at a later stage yeah you might get divorced at a young age and then as after that you can't be away from sexual relationship so you will do it either in a halal way or in a haram way with another person so now you have tasted more than one person. You cannot be satisfied with one person. Later on, you will become older 
and you will be hungry for a sexual relationship, yes, and that will put you in more troubles, okay, and troubles. That's why, brothers, young, you, m many of you are like my children. We want to protect you. We want to protect you. Be away, okay, of those things. Otherwise, there are mistakes that might lead you to regret for the rest of your life. I'm spending more two more days with you, any of one, and the mashayikh are here. Sheikh is here with you all the time. The brothers are here. If you have a problem, please, okay, approach any of us. We might try to provide you with a help that might really uh, protect you against major problems you could put yourself in. This is Iman. She's 14 years old, a Norwegian Muslim living with her parents. In the next 20 seconds, she is going to send indecent pictures of herself to her secret boyfriend. This is why. Norway a Scandinavian country that Muslims migrated to 50 years ago, with around 200,000 Muslims. But this is changing. Muslim names are increasing, but Iman is dying in the hearts of our youth. The vast majority of these Muslims do not pray and are leaving their Islamic heritage and adopting the Western lifestyle. Why is this happening? Why are the youth leaving the Islamic way of life? The majority of Muslims came to Norway seeking financial opportunities. The mosques that were established were centered around culture from back home, and the next generation of Muslims assimilated to the Western lifestyle. The main source of Islamic knowledge remained the Friday sermon that was conducted in the mother tongue of the first generation of Muslims, so the youth didn't connect to it. Iman is not happy at home. Her parents often tell her to start praying and stay away from boys, and that makes Iman feel suffocated and depressed, because no one taught her why Islam teaches Muslims to pray, or why it sets moral boundaries for relationships with the opposite gender. Iman doesn't know what to do. On one side, she loves her family, and she loves Allah. On the other side, she doesn't understand Islam, and its restrictions and guidelines don't make sense to her. So she is living a double life. Muslim at home and someone else outside. Iman is not just an individual. She symbolizes the Iman of the majority of young Norwegian Muslims. They are struggling to retain their Islamic identity and are drifting away from Islam. We need to save Iman. We need to start at the grassroots level. The problem lies in the lack of Islamic knowledge resulting in the weakening of Iman. So we want to build the country's first Islamic Dawah Center, combined with a masjid that will share the message of Islam in a way that the youth of today can relate to. It will have a youth center where the youth can come instead of hanging in the streets or going to Western clubs. It will have Islamic programs and activities where the youth can learn their religion. It will have a studio for mass production of Dawah material for social media. It will educate the Muslim community on how to bring up their children on Islamic values. We have already raised about $1 million locally, and to make this project come true, we need to raise the remaining amount. There are 1.8 billion Muslims, but the question is, are you one of those very special people who will help save Iman? Please, click the link, give for the sake of Allah, and earn your reward. Also, we need to make the Muslim world aware of this campaign, so please do whatever you can. Share this video on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and all other social media networks. We alone cannot save Iman, but together we can. Um. This one is about, we'll first take it for the sisters and then we're going to take the same question for the brothers, okay? About putting your, your image or videos of yourself publicly. It's, been a, it's become a trend now that, let's take sisters first and then we're going to come to the brothers, so don't worry, okay? Is it Islamically allowed at all, at any circumstance, that sisters put their pictures online? Facebook, Instagram, or even they start YouTube channels vlogging, doing whatever, 
whatever they, they, they do, they do a lot of things, okay? Is that acceptable? Yes. I don't want to keep speaking. Sheikh Ali? I know you want to keep speaking, but... <laughs> As I said earlier, I, I'm like, you know, a dinosaur disconnected from you well. Alhamdulillah, I don't have any facade book. Alhamdulillah, I don't have it. But I think uh, this is a tool which can be used for a positive trend and, and, and a negative way. So it depends on what is... You mean Facebook now, right? Yeah, yeah. You don't mean Im women putting up images of themselves? No, no, no. We, I'm not talking about this. Yeah, the, but that's what... Yeah, that's yeah. The... Has it something to do with this? Okay. Is it like, you know, yeah, what you're That was is, my question. No, no. About I think women? When, we're not talking about images and we're not talking about, you know, videos. But that was my question. Was that question? Yes. So I give this young guy, mashallah. He is <laughs> quite familiar. Women... Yeah, putting okay. up images of so themselves, have, uh, either with week, hijab, without hijab, whatever. Uh, last week we had uh, a small And sometimes the lips are coming a little bit yeah. more extra out, you know. L listen to this. Re this is a real story. Last week we had uh, we had some meeting with some brothers from uh, yani, doing da'wah in different places. So one brother was narrating this story. He said uh, he, wa he was in, in America, okay, and... Uh, uh, they were يعني, meeting for da'wah in the hall, uh, in the hall of one of the flats of the da'is. So he said, I wanted to go to the toilet. The toilet is inside the other room. So he said, I had to go through his living room. When I went to his living room, I was shocked. Yeah? And this, he said, he, this is a true story. He... This is a da'ya, giving da'wah. What did he see in his living room? A big picture of one of the famous sisters. He took that picture from her Facebook and he made it big and he put it on the wall. Yeah? Okay. Now, see, sisters, listen, listen, listen. We as men, yeah, we have weakness towards women. This is our weakness. Yeah? Anyone who disagree of men, he is not a man. This is our weakness. Okay? Now, many of you say, no, brothers should lower their gaze. You cannot just display yourself everywhere, on TV, on here and there, and, and then tell us, lower your gaze. Many of you want to give lectures in front of brothers. And... What are you planning, Yani, to, to give a lecture on YouTube and record yourself, mashallah, and you say, brothers and sisters, lowering the gaze increases your iman. And we look at you on YouTube and say, yes, sister, subhanallah, my iman is increasing now. <laughs> Come on. The, this is the trend, yeah. The other day, one of the brothers, he told me, don't you know, now there are so many young sisters, they have their... Uh, vlog, uh, what is it? They are doing vlogging, yeah? And they have their YouTubes, and they are talking about taqwa and iman, and etc., etc. What are they, whom they are talking to? Are they talking to brothers? Are they talking to, to sisters? Are to, they are talking to who? Yeah? Let us not fool ourselves. This is a reality, okay? And something we call, we all came across. No need for you, sisters, to do that. No need, yeah? One of the sisters said, but the face is not aura. I said, it's not about the face is not aura. And the face is not aura. Are you going to put your face like this on your uh, profile, just like this? Yeah? Or are you going to smile a little bit, put your hands like this, wear maybe colorful hijab in order to match your, color, your face color, yeah? In order to look beautiful in the picture. What is the reality, sisters? What is the reality? We all know this. Come on. Let us not fool ourselves. This is here in these <laughs> countries where every يعني, sexual relationship is easy. Uh, the relation between, between men and women is loose. Yet these things take place. What does that mean? Yeah, It means that women 
as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam said, مَا تَرَكْتُ فِتْنَةً أَضَرَّ عَلَى الرِّجَالِ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ This is our fitna. As men, you are our fitna. So, طيب, and that's why one of the, the key quality for women to go to Jannah after fasting, sorry, after prayer and fasting is what? To protect her chastity. Jazakallah khair. Now we'll take the same question for the brothers, okay? Because you, we will, many brothers, yani they, okay, is it even allowed to put pictures of Sheikh Haytham online and have this beautiful Sheikh in lectures? No, not a lot. Because I think the, the Sheikh is too much fitna for the sisters. Yes. Yeah? I, I, maybe I'm fitna for brothers and sisters. Yeah. I don't know what kind of community you live in, Sheikh. That's too much. Uh, but it could be, subhanAllah, so nowadays, yeah. these rainbow days. Yes. Yeah? Anyways, uh, but okay, to be more specific, we received some complaints from sisters, okay? Sheikh Muhammad Hijab, he wants to say Yes, we received some, before we go to that, we received some complaints from sisters, yeah, saying that brothers are putting out images of themselves where they are displaying muscles, yani maybe just exactly covering the aura, and yani doing this stylish moves, you know? Stylish, it, mo it, stylish move like what? I'm not going to do any moves, Chef. Oh. We can use that power for moves. Anyways, <laughs> is it allowed for brothers to put out images or videos of themselves displaying themselves in a way that might cause temptation to women? That's the question. If the brother is not yani, handsome like Muhammad Hijab, then he can. Is that ironically or is it seriously? Not handsome? Come on. It looks okay. Okay, let's, let's hear from the brothers. Is, okay, let's hear from the brothers. Finally, I mean, <laughs> this is what kind of censorship is this? What kind of illiberal? Oh, Ibrahim, thing. Ibrahim. <laughs> Sheikh always take over, takes over. Ibrahim. I was going to ask Sheikh, I wanted to ask some questions because to be honest with you, it seems like um, we're playing with like masalih, mafasid, sadd al all these uh, things, yeah? Like uh, all these usuri principles. Like this is what I feel. The, the first question that was asked, can sisters approach brothers so that they can ask them questions about the deen? Yeah, that's the first question. You gave a very good answer, understood it. But then it was suggested that sisters should approach other sisters but if sisters are not public online how can they approach other sisters does that make sense so yeah if clear. if if there isn't a, a female a point, alternative yeah. of the dawah for a woman then it it doesn't facilitate for a woman to go to another woman so that what will happen is they'll end up going back to the men and that that fitna will be there so which is a khaf for rain and which is the lesser of two evils from your perspective and um and you know, another point I wanted to ask you as well is that nowadays, especially as we're going to be covering, inshallah soon, especially with things like women's issues, women's issues that um, women are more, uh, I would say, they have more of an experience with yani, in, in life and things like that. Is there a benefit in females going public to elaborate a case? Don't you think there's a benefit that, for example, if they elaborate a case for their own um, gender, that it could be more powerful in terms of dawah and making a social case than if a man did it. Because I've noticed that when I, for example, go and do dawah, uh, especially talking about feminism and things like that, I get a backlash that, okay, well, we want to hear from females of your community. And so these are all things which uh, I wanted to ask you about because I thought maybe there's a balance we can strike. I don't know. Fahad is the big boss, so... Whether he okay. wants us to answer these questions. Now. You may answer those questions, but don't forget my question as well. Right. Okay, uh, quickly. First of all, regarding, we said there are a number of measures to be taken. So if sisters can go to sister, then yes. If she can't, then she goes to a brother. But it should be uh, transparent, it should be short, it should be okay, public, it should be formal, etc. So we are not saying that you cannot talk to any sheikh or any da'ya about Islam. We didn't say that. Okay, but we said it should be controlled. Now, the other thing is for women to go to discuss certain things pertinent to women. It can be, it can be, but why 
A young sister is speaking about taqwa. Yeah? On YouTube. And she's recording something about taqwa on YouTube. Are we lacking in talks about taqwa? Yeah? Other young sisters will not listen except to this sister. Yeah? That, what you mentioned, is just yani, the generalization of those who want to justify for themselves why they are going public. And by the way, yeah, this is, and I'm sure, I don't know whether sisters yani, have reached to that level or not. I, we, it is a, a well-known principle. Yeah, The female yeah, does not like another female as her supervisor or as her manager. Yeah, Because female to female, they feel jealous. Yeah. That's why Allah Jalla wa'ala sent over 25,000 prophets. All of them were males. Yeah? Why? Because Allah Jalla wa'ala knows that males appeal to females and males. Yeah? Allah Jalla wa'ala didn't say, okay, let us half half or 5,000 or 1,000 female prophets we send. Yeah? And now those fe feminists, they say, yeah, but there is Aisha and there is Khadija. Okay, there is Aisha and Khadija. But compared to what? 25,000, all of them were prophets. Yeah? Male prophets. This gives us an indication of the dynamic, the social dynamic of this life. Now, we cannot say that we have another social dynamic if that is the normal of humanity. The other thing, now regarding brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters, look. Women are, okay, obliged to wear hijab in general, and whether they are obliged to f cover their faces or not, let us not get into this discussion. But definitely, the hijab women should observe is different from the hijab w men should observe. We are observing hijab, yani part of our what clothes. But the hijab of women is more conservative, yes? Moreover, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam, he was giving khutbah, women were looking at him. Yes, he was teaching women, women were looking at him. The fitna, the dynamic of fitna between brothers, uh, males and females is different. The man, the male becomes uh, attached or his, the, the fitna of sisters or females for the male are quicker and by anything, by the way she looks, by the way she speaks, by her clothes, by her shoes, by maybe, uh, okay. But the fitna of men for females is not by their looks. It is very rare when a sister looks at a man and says, wow. Yeah? It can happen, but it is not the norm. Yeah? The fitna of men, okay, to women comes with a lot of interaction. Wow, this brother is really cool. This brother is really kind. This brother is this and that. And that comes from what? A lot of interaction. Not just by his face. Yeah? Okay? In fact, sometimes his face might put her off. Now, okay, I do agree. I do agree that for brothers, yani a brother, a da'ya, why he's putting his chest, okay, on... Uh, on Facebook or on his profile. Why? Yeah, this is a problem. Why he is putting himself in a very, maybe, feministic way? Yeah? Or my, why he is putting, whenever he has his hair cut, uh, he had his, uh, his hair cut, yeah? He's putting a new image of his. Okay, look at me like this, like that. My, this is my hairstyle. My... That is problematic. Okay, although he is a male, that is problematic, and we say, no, don't do that, because that will create fitna for others. Yeah, for, for, for I mean, uh, for girls. Yes, inshallah, but we only have one minute until Maghrib prayer, inshallah. I think um, when it comes to Islam, it does not detailly explain many things. What I mean by this is that there are general rules which have been laid down by our jurists and scholars, which fit for every time, which actually means that when this happens, this is a general formula. So there is a general formula here in Islam. Islam looks at 
the goal of the thing, which actually means, let us say now, uh, if I use a knife, if I use it for killing people, it's haram. But when I use it to cut the meat or the vegetables into pieces, it's halal. If I use the mirror to look at myself in it, it's halal. But if I use it to look at somebody else's private parties in the mirror, it's haram. If I use this money for sadaqah, for charity, for something to eat, it's halal. If I use it to, for, you know, for fornication, it is something haram. So Islam looks at the purpose of this usage. What are you using for? So there is no such thing as this is totally haram, this is totally halal, but it depends on how you use it. So now I think, you know, world has changed. So we have now, you know, there are many things new in our life and they're going to come other new things in the life. But Islam did not say to you, you're going to have like this type of, of computer, you're going to have like this type of social. But Islam has laid down the foundations from which we can, uh, you know, apply things into. This is what, what I mean by this. So it depends what this picture is for, what this video is for. It depends on the purpose of that to determine whether this is halal and this is haram. This according to the uh, juristic issue. Another thing, there is a qaida which says la ibrada bit la ibrata bit tawahum. We cannot raise suspicious things before the thing happens. So let let us look at it, into it, and see where it is up. And after that, we can pass a judgment, a verdict on it based on what we see. Uh, from this Al-Qaeda uh, Brother Fahad, how's Iman doing? Not good, Akhi. It's not good. <laughs> is it really that bad? I'm really afraid it is. Is there anything we could do to save Iman? Yes. Iman is dying, but we can save Iman with your donation. Please watch until the end and give for the sake of Allah. And He subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you up to 700 times in return and build for you a house in Jannah. I am Fahad Qureshi and I'm chairman of the Islamic network, IslamNet, one of the most influential Islamic organizations in my nation. I was born and raised in a European country called Norway. In search of a better life, my parents migrated to Norway in the 70s. What they didn't realize was that Iman may not be able to survive this journey. The population of Norway is around 5.3 million people, with Muslims making up 200,000 of that population. The number of Muslim names is increasing, but the number of Muslims with Iman is decreasing. In other words, Iman is dying in the hearts of our youth today. Islamnet has been for the last 10 years working non-stop and developing key da'wah projects to maintain the Muslim identity for our next generation. So we are making a change. I was a non-Muslim with no purpose in life, but Allah guided me and Islamnet gave me a platform to spread Islam in my country. Islamnet has given me an opportunity not only to learn Islam but also to give da'wah and invite other children to Islam. I can't express how grateful I am for having Islamnet in my life. Through our projects, we are combating Islamophobia, inviting non-Muslims to Islam, giving tarbiyah to the youth, guiding non-practicing Muslims back to Allah, giving support to reverts, fighting extremism, and empowering the Muslim community to get involved in da'wah. We have been operating from a small office that no longer can cater for our needs. We need to establish a masjid with a da'wah and community center that can host Islamic events and exhibitions, have a youth center and offices where we can have full-time du'at, expanding the da'wah and tarbiyah programs so we can bring up a generation of youth aspiring to make the word of Allah the highest. Fahad, that is absolutely brilliant. We have to do this. Brothers and sisters, donate generously and help us to establish this masjid and da'wah center. And don't forget to make dua and share this video on all your social media platforms so everyone can benefit from this amazing project. We are not going to let Iman die.